This is a Mr. T adventure story. You can follow Mr. T and his gymnastic team friends, Miss Bisbee, Robin, Jeff, Woody, Skye, and Spike in your very own book. It's easy. Read along. When you hear this tone, it means turn the page. Now, here's Mr. T. Ever do something that you knew was wrong, but you did it because you thought you had a good reason? Well, this is a tale called The Mystery of the Forbidden Monastery. We were on our way to a meet, but there was no meet. Sounds confusing? One of our team members knew the scoop, but ended up leading us into a mess of trouble. Here's the story. Mr. T and the team drove for days through the dry, hot desert. Finally, they arrived in Enchanted Pueblo, New Mexico. Mr. T steered the bus into a gas station. Everyone jumped out of the bus to take a look around. Which way to the gymnastic meet? Mr. T asked the gas station attendant. There's no meet in this town, was the man's reply. What? You must be mistaken. We have an invitation, Robin said. Sorry, you're mistaken. There's no meet here, the man repeated. The team was stunned. Why were they invited to a meet when there was no meet? What were they going to do now? Skye suggested they spend the night before heading home. She said she grew up on a reservation in the area and remembered a hotel just down the street. They were about to board the bus when they noticed a monk peering from behind the corner of the gas station as if hiding. He looked right, then left, and darted past the team out into the street. Suddenly, a van raced down the street and screeched to a halt. The van was driven by an evil-looking man called Largo. Two men dressed as monks jumped out of the van, grabbed the running monk, and pushed him inside. The van roared away. Mr. T could tell that the monk who was hiding didn't want to go with the others, or he wouldn't have been trying to run away. So, Mr. T decided to find out what was going on. He hopped into the bus and slammed the door, but not before Woody slipped in. They chased the van into the desert. Just when they were about to catch up, kaboom, a tire blew out. The bus swerved out of control and landed in a ditch. The van drove away, leaving a trail of dust. It would take hours for Mr. T and Woody to fix the flat and get back on the road. Meanwhile, in town, it was getting dark and Mr. T hadn't returned. Miss Bisbee took the team over to the hotel to check in for the night. In the lobby, Skye was approached by an Indian who handed her a message. Skye quickly stuffed the note in her jacket pocket, looked around the lobby to make sure no one saw her, and then took the stairs to her room. Mr. T and Woody still hadn't returned. The team gathered in Skye's room. Outside the window, they could see the hauntingly dim lights in the monastery windows. Sky told the other kids about the ancient monastery. Poor monks live there, she said. Like the ones Mr. T and Woody went after, Jeff exclaimed. Mr. T and Woody might be there now. They could be in trouble, Robin said. Spike spoke gruff like Mr. T and said, We gonna keep talking or start doing? Sky pulled on her jacket, not seeing that the note had fallen out of her pocket. The team snuck out into the night. The team climbed up the high mesa to the monastery. They were certain that Mr. T and Woody were there somewhere. They entered through an old door and quietly made their way down a long, dark hallway. It led them to a giant room full of boxes marked Tokugawa Video. TVs! What are poor monks doing with so many TVs? Asked Jeff.
You have now come to the end of this side of the recording. Please turn it over for the conclusion of the story. Meanwhile, Mr. T and Woody finally repaired the bus and returned to town. They found Miss Bisbee pacing in her hotel room. The kids are gone. Maybe it has something to do with this note I found in Skye's room. Miss Bisbee offered. The note read, help us. The eagle lands on the monastery at midnight. Come on, Woody. We're going to pay some monks a visit, Mr. T said. Robin, Jeff, Skye, and Spike explored the giant storage room. They discovered a secret passage. Cobwebs hung in their faces as they quietly crept down the passageway. At the end, they found a heavy wooden door. And behind that door, they found five monks locked in a jail cell. The monks told the team that they had been imprisoned by a group of crooks who were impersonating them and using the monastery as a base for smuggling stolen TVs from Mexico. Suddenly, the heavy wooden door behind the kids slammed shut. The team and the monks spun around to see the evil face of Largo glaring through a small hatch in the door at them. Now that you've found what you came for, I promise you'll live to regret it, Largo said as he closed the hatch. The kids huddled together. It seemed escape was impossible. No one knew where they were. Suddenly, bash! The heavy wooden door splintered into a thousand pieces. And there stood Mr. T and Woody. Mr. T ripped the jail cell door off its hinges and threw it over his shoulder. You're free, he said. Lucky we found the note in Sky's room. Tell me what's going on around here. The monks repeated the story about the crooks to Mr. T. Mr. T and the kids charged out after the smugglers. The crooks were on the roof. A helicopter hovered above as a net full of TVs was being hoisted aboard. That's what the note meant by the eagle lands on the monastery at midnight. Sky exclaimed. You know more about this than you let on, said Mr. T. And you can explain later. With a great bound, Mr. T leaped up and swung himself aboard the helicopter. He reached in and shoved the crooks to one side and pulled the control lever back. The helicopter landed with a crash. Now it's time to cart these turkeys away, said Mr. T. The American Championship Gymnastics Team Bus bounced over the dusty desert road on its way home. Mr. T explained to Miss Bisbee that the crooks were hiding stolen TVs in the monastery and shipping them by helicopter to other parts of the country. Sky admitted that a friend from Enchanted Pueblo had called a few weeks before and told her that something strange was happening at the monastery. Sky wanted to help, but she knew Mr. T would never allow the team to go looking for trouble. So she made up the phony meat to get the team to Enchanted Pueblo. The team forgave Sky. They were glad to have helped the monks and thought it was the best case they ever solved. So everything turned out okay. But listen up. Think twice before you do something wrong. You might be getting yourself and your friends in a heap of trouble. Do what's right, and you can't go wrong. Take it from me, Mr. T.